new developments on North Korea. We want you to take a look, live look at Guam, where it is nighttime right now. Yeah, that is the U.S. territory in the Pacific, home to thousands of Americans that North Korea threatened to launch missiles toward uh, last night. Of course, that was their response to the president's Trump's fire and fury warning. They're also calling it a load of nonsense. As Defense Secretary James Mattis warns North Korea against any actions that will lead to the, quote, destruction of North Korea's people. Our chief global affairs anchor Martha Reddis tracking all the latest. She starts us off from Washington. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, George. This is truly a war of words between Donald Trump and North Korea's leader, but it could have very real consequences. This morning, as you said, a U.S. territory is facing a very specific threat from North Korea in response to Donald Trump's strong words. A defiant rebuke by North Korea in a statement calling President Trump's recent comments a load of nonsense, saying the president is a guy bereft of reason and only absolute force can work on him. And this morning, a renewed specific threat to Guam. North Korea announcing it will launch four missiles at the waters near the island by mid-August. Overnight, the governor of Guam responding, encouraging calm. There is concern and, and worry, but there's, there is no panic. Also overnight, South Korea warning of strong and resolute retaliation for any attack against them or the U.S. The new North Korean threat coming in response to that fiery warning by President Trump. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. In a statement, Defense Secretary James Mattis backing up the commander-in-chief but stressing defense, saying that the U.S. has unquestionable commitment to defend ourselves from an attack and that North Korea should cease any consideration of actions that would lead to the end of its regime and the destruction of its people. And in Pyongyang on Wednesday, a rallying call. Thousands of North Korean citizens packing the square in that nation's capital in a display of unity. The increasingly threatening rhetoric coming as U.S. intelligence analysts now believe scientists in North Korea can produce miniature nuclear warheads that can fit inside those ICBM missiles. Kim Jong-un launched two of them last month. But for now, all eyes are focused on Guam because the threat was so specific, saying four missiles, giving an approximate date, and saying the waters, not the island itself. This may increase the likelihood they may actually do this, George. Okay, Martha, let's talk about it more now with our military analyst, Steve Gannon. Steve, as Martha said, this is a very specific provocation right now, four or five missiles towards Guam in the next couple of weeks. And there's already been a warning against it from both South Korea and Japan. Yeah, George, the specificity is interesting. Not only does it designate the particular kind of missile, it says four, it says the parts of Japan it's going to overfly and what the intent is. So uh, I think here what we're looking at really is part of the continuing test program because this missile that they're talking about has been very unreliable and they've never launched it in salvos in multiple. So it could be a convenient uh, excuse to test the missile program further. Right, they want to test it. It's supposed to go over international waters and the, and the other areas you just mentioned, but it could get very close to actually actual U.S. territory, if it gets within the U.S. territorial waters, what do we do? Uh, George, there's a THAAD missile system, which is a new defensive missile system. We've talked about it in South Korea before. The THAAD is intended to defend areas, and so it's a good missile to have there. The problem is the THAAD is still a developmental missile, and although it has a 100 percent success rate, it's never been tested against four, and the North Koreans know that. But as you note, the real concern here is Guam is American territory. And so, if the North Koreans miscalculate, that's an act of so, war. So take us inside the decision-making process inside the government as North mm -hmm. Korea prepares for this. They'll be obviously watching every second of every day. But how will they make the decision whether or not the test requires a response? Uh, the, the radars that will pick up the launch uh, from North Korea will, will hand off that data as the missile travels towards Guam. And this THAAD missile system is very sophisticated, and it'll operate almost on, on, on automatic uh, mode. And so it sees that missile coming in. The president, I'm sure, will authorize that if they do see a missile coming in, they're authorized to knock it down. So a lot of this will be automated and will be data that will be passed off through a series of radars out in the western Pacific. Tensions are getting high. Steve Gannon, thanks very much.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.